hello I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to make rocking chair floor protectors so um so I've just got a model of a rocking chair obviously just to be able to show you in the video how, how this is actually going to work and this is my actual prototype so I've actually made this on a cardboard tube just to be able to share with you okay so if we try and have a look at this so this area here is going to be the area that comes underneath the bottom of the actual rocker and then the little straps are to be able to go let's just move that over there so they're going to go over this section and over here and over here and the caps obviously are going to be able to go on to the end now the lady called um chantelle um, made this request and i don't know the exact size of your rocking chair so this is just a guide okay of how you can actually do it for yourself so i do hope you enjoy it and say so this is especially for a lady called chantal who asked me if i could actually do these for her okay so i'm going to put the rocking chair to one side and also i'm just going to show you i am actually going to also use another little tube just for demonstration okay um, I'm going to be using my number four millimeter crochet hook, which is also a G6. And I'm going to be using different color yarns as I do different uh, sections of this, okay? And they're all just sort of um, double knit baby yarns. Um, so I did say that there's four millimeter G6 hook. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to begin with a twist on the hook and we're going to do a chain of three. So that's one, two, three. And then we're going to do yarn over and work into the end chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. So that is a double crochet if you're in the US or a triple crochet if you're in the UK. Now we're going to work eight single crochets into the center of this V8 stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and working over the tail end, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's a single crochet if you're in the US or a double crochet if you're in the UK. And now we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet or double crochet to join. And you can pull the tail end tight to make that be an, a tiny hole. This is also the same that you're going to make for your button, okay? So then we're going to do a chain one and now we're going to work, don't work into the same space, but into the next stitch along. We're working half double crochet or a half treble. So you're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three strands on your hook. And we're going to work two stitches in each of the stitches we've already got. So that's two, four, oops, Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and the sixteenth. So the next two stitches are going to go into what is actually where you did the slip stitch. So it might be a tighter stitch when you go to do that, okay? So we've got our 16 stitches. Oops, I've split my yarn. There we go. And then we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet, not into the chain, but into the very top of that first stitch or the half treble. Okay, so that's round one. Round two, you're going to make one chain and then you're going to just work the half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And then this, what's going to happen now is this is going to start curving over. Now, realistically, oh, well, let's just stop a moment, just there. When you've actually got to this first stage, you need to make sure that this is going to just cover the end. Okay, so this slightly hangs over just a little tiny bit. And then the rest of it is going to cup over so that you actually start to make, they like the chair socks so that it's, um, or the chair gliders, and it's very, very similar to all of that, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to just keep going around until you get to the end and I'll just share with you how to join at the ends just to try and make sure you've got this as neat as possible because on my actual prototype that I've made in green I um, I was just 
just do, doing it as I was it was just one of those things I was just thinking how to do it and not really thinking about the neatness of everything so we just want to make sure that yours is as neat as possible and as nice looking um, because obviously it's something that's going to be spoken about so the very last stitch is always the actual slip stitch area and then you're going to slip stitch again into the top of the first half double crochet or half treble crochet stitch to join and you're just going to keep on going like that so it makes this little cap that goes over whoops, your work so if I move forward on the prototype I did five rounds of actual half double crochet so this will actually slot over the end of what of your rocking chair okay so then the next stage is to then work this section here the long section so to do that because I've done it with 16 stitches what I'm going to do for this one is I did a chain of two and then worked in the next 10 stitches it's still half double crochet so that's one whoops two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so if you've done yours and you've had to use more stitches go to so that it's just above halfway around of what you actually want to do to get this finish across the bottom then you do a chain of two turn and then you're going to don't work into this bit there but work into the tops of the stitches so you're going to go back and it's always the same amount of what you've done so that's that's two stitches because we don't count the chain as a stitch that's three four five turn ends in the way there <laughs> um six whoops my yarn's getting stuck <laughs> seven eight nine and then you do this very end of it there so you're just going to go underneath two strands for your 10th stitch okay so you're just going to keep doing those on this sample that I've done there I actually did a total of 34 obviously you need to do yours as long or almost as long as your actual um, rocker itself so my end section was I've done one and a half inches so you need to make this as all the way to there and leave one and a half inches at the other end ready to be able to do this other cap on the end so here's the other one that I was making in green so this is so I've done all of the that's got my 34 rows or I do believe it has anyway <laughs> and then what we're going to do to be able to then make the other cap as a continuation rather than having to do anything separate we're going to do a chain of six so that's one two three four five six because I want to make a total of 16 again and then you're going to go to the very end into there so your last stitch and you're going to go underneath your two strands and you're going to slip stitch to join like that now you're going to chain one because you want to make sure that your this chain has gone the same direction as this one here excuse that bad join in there because we're going to show you how to do a better bit um there so i've done a chain one you turn the work because we're now going to work back into this chain okay so make sure you're counting your chain so you've got so this is the very end one so that's one two three four five six is to there okay so you just go underneath one strand or you can do two if you want and do the half double crochet so that's one two three my yarn's getting tangled sorry four five and then this very end one here is six 
and then we're going to continue into the tops of these stitches like we was doing the other one so we keep on counting because we want to get back to the same amount so that's seven eight nine ten I hope you can see this all right <laughs> eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then the end one there is sixteen okay so now what you want to do is you want to slip stitch your stitch is actually curved over a little bit so slip stitch into the very top of the first half double crochet or half triple crochet that you made slip stitch into there to join and that will give you a much neater finish rather than this one where I actually didn't do a nice neat finish. So then you want to chain one and then you're just going to half double crochet in the tops of all of them all the way around until you actually get to the required length that you actually want to do. Want, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that didn't come out right, did it? <laughs> the required length that you wanted to do for the ends of your caps. Um, so obviously for this one I've done 16. If you say if you've done 20 and um, then you need to make yours go up to 20 and whichever but you do need to have an equal number because for the where we want to close up the end of the cap we're going to do um, we're going to be working two together and I've found that um, this is probably not the traditional way of doing a join or um, reduction sorry but it works really nicely for this particular project because we want the end oops I've split my yarn up we want the end to tip over rather than to start as a as a curve like you know like if you're doing um, a hat or something you want to keep the curve but this we want it to be flat so one more stitch in the end remember you have to do that stitch in the end there so you've got your, all of your stitches we miss the chain and slip stitch to join in the top of the first stitch you can see that that gives a lot nicer finish there so to do the reduction we do a chain one to start off with yarn over like you're going to do the half double crochet yarn over pull through your stitch then the next stitch along we're just going to just put your hook through and pick up the yarn so you've got four strands and then yarn over and pull through all four so you yarn over go into the first stitch yarn over come back into the next stitch you're just going to just put your hook straight through and yarn over and, pull, and then pull through all four and sorry my work's getting all twisted okay so I'm just going to just do this so we've got to the end of this round just so that you can actually see so yarn over and pull through oh no I didn't do that <laughs> yarn over go into the work put your hook through yarn over and then pull through all of them there yarn over into the work catch your yarn into the next stitch and then yarn over so yarn over into the first stitch yarn over pull through into the next stitch then yarn over at the back and pull through four stitches and we'll soon be finished because that reduces this down so we've got our eight stitches and then we've got the last two into there yarn over pull through and then we're going to slip stitch to join in the top of the first stitch that we've made not the actual um not the actual chain let's just cut that piece off this is just so i'm just showing with you what you do so you pull that through so this is going to leave you a hole at the end but then what you're going to do is you're just going to get your needle i'll just do that quickly pull that through there if i can there we go and then this one, you, all you do is you just weave it in and out of the stitches. So in and out. Oops. There. And then you're just going to pull that so that that cut that. So do it as tight as you want so that you've actually sealed up the other end. Okay, so then you've got your main body and your caps on the end. So I've already showed, so at the beginning where we did the beginning section, that's how you actually make a button. And then to actually do the actual ties, the actual buttonholes, 
and what we're going to do is just twist it begin with a twist I'm just going to just begin just do this randomly okay so you want you want to do is you want to work over one of the end stitches and just put your hook into the actual work and slip stitch to join then you're going to do a chain of three so that's one two three then you're going to yarn over twice go back into that same space yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two and that'll make you the buttonhole is going to be big enough for however for the button that we've made but also as it pulls it looks like a nice attractive piece and then to do the rest of the buttons it's so it, um, buttonholes it's one two three chains yarn over twice then into the top two strands of the stitches you've already made yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two okay so then and you make those as long as you need because obviously you're making this for your actual rocking chair i've just made this just as a as a guide so that you can because when you actually obviously when it's like that i'll just undo the buttons just to show you um so that you can see whoops so as you undo the buttons you can see that it starts to to, to sag okay remember as well you have got some stretch in there so because you'd actually want it to be able to stretch over to stretch off the ends okay so that you need to think about that as well so we can see that that now because i've been messing about with it it's caused an extra sag on there but by actually doing the actual buttons and fastening those into place i mean you can use ordinary buttons plastic buttons if you want to do that but i just like crochet buttons myself um, and if you wanted to do them in contrasting colours, then obviously you can. Because this has got a bit of sag going off it, because I wasn't sure, you know, because like if it's going to curve, it might need that extra give. But once you've actually finished doing all of that, let's just get this off just so that we can just show you one here and undo this here. To then neaten up this edge, all, all you would then do is... Just begin with a twist begin with wherever you wanted to wanted to but then over the ends of the rows you're just going to just work a single crochet so just by doing this single crochet over the actual ends of your rows you got whoops oh that didn't work very well did it <laughs> so um just to do that we can see that that will then end up giving it a much neater finish by going around we see it so it then you would get a much nicer result than having the wobbly edge can you see the difference of that um so i would suggest that you do this edge in with the same color but obviously it's entirely up to you but there you go so i do hope that this has actually solved your problem chantelle and that you actually that it's at least going to give you a good guide of how you can actually make some for yourself okay so um and if everybody else has enjoyed watching this video then thank you for watching it thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing i really really do appreciate you all I say this is just it was a request from chantelle she did ask me um a little while ago but i was busy doing my other um videos so um so that yeah so this is a prototype for the rocking chair and um, which obviously would make it slide lovely across the wooden floor and stop it from scratching the floor so um yep yeah, thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing i do appreciate all of you bye for now